Hi guys, welcome to my studio. My name is Corlin Blake. Today we'll be looking at how to stretch your own canvas for those of you who want to become or make paintings. Uh, so this is my assistant. Uh, my dress, uh, I just came from karate, so that's why I'm wearing karate here. But this is my daughter. Uh, she will be our assistant today in making our own, stretching our own canvas. Uh, so you can start making your own work from scratch to a certain extent. Uh, so Maggie, bring that brown bag and the stretcher bars. So there are a few things that you'll need. Uh, well, first, let me tell you who I am. Uh, so my name is Cortland Blade. I am an artist. Uh, I've been an artist for uh, 10 years, uh, going on 11 years. Um, I'm here based out of Indianapolis, Indiana. So this is my studio. Uh, so I also teach at a uh, local college. Uh, so again, my name is Cortland, but I'm also known as the professor. So Cortland Blade, AKA the professor. So here, there are a few things you'll need to know or have uh, to make your own canvas uh, applicable or ready uh, to paint. So first, you'll need, give me what is there? You'll need stretcher bars. Uh, so these are bars you can find at any uh, store that you actually uh, can buy art supplies from. I happen to get these from a local um, United Art and Education store. Uh, so these are 24 by uh, 18 inch bars. So this specific canvas will be 24 by 18 inches. Uh, but you can get any size you want. Uh, this, work, this works on any uh, size. You also will need a staple gun. Can you grab my staple gun there? And you'll need staples. I happen to have heavy duty staples that are about half of an inch. Uh, so we'll need this for, for the process. So I have two here. Ace. And this is the one I've had. This is my old paper. I've had this ever since my undergrad years at University of Indianapolis, uh, going into Indiana State. Uh, so I actually studied at several schools. So I studied with several masters of the medium of, of different types of paintings and drawings. Uh, so we also have canvas. This is lighter canvas. It's about seven ounces. You can also get a 10 ounce canvas. So again, I studied uh, art at Vincent's University. I went into uh, University of Annapolis. I met my lovely wife there. Uh, then I went to Indiana State where I finished my Bachelor of Fine Arts. Then I went to Tufts University in affiliation with the School Museum of Fine Arts in Boston where I studied with uh, some more great, great artists that, that I learned a lot uh, from. So the first thing we'll do is we'll lay our canvas out. So this is a yard of canvas. A yard. A yard being, of course, three feet. Three, 12 inch American feet. So this is way more canvas than we actually need uh, for what we're doing. So we'll put our bars together. Uh, so if you come closer, we come closer, we can see how they kind of interlock here. Uh, so you have your stretcher bars. Uh, they interlock, you kind of wiggle it in. And always make sure your, your stretcher bars are straight uh, when you pick them. Sometimes you can get warped uh, bars and you have this kind of wonky uh, quality in the bars. So here, who's connected here? Thank you, Anaya. See, she's such a good helper. A little helper. She's gonna learn so much too, right? She wants to grow and become an artist as well. So we just put these, put all four together. Again, you'll have to have two sides that are the same size on both uh, sides of the, the canvas. So these are the stretcher bars. Again, this works for large canvases as well as smaller canvases. So whatever size you want to work with. Uh, we will face this down. Put the same on both sides. Use it either way. It doesn't really matter uh, for this specific type of stretching, stretching bars. Uh, so you have to place that here. So this, again, this is a yard. So we don't want to kind of place it all the way in the middle because then we'll have a lot of fabric that we're wasting. Uh, so we're going to want to move this more towards the corner. See how much we need to fold over to actually stretch it. Need about this much here. Maybe a little, uh, little bit of overhang maybe, uh, but you really don't need any. Uh, 
So if you want to keep it economy, uh, you can go further out, put it right at the edge. About the same distance, we're going to want to uh, find a spot on the bottom side and the inside. Uh, so I'm going to have to grab scissors or my trusty knife uh, to cut this canvas. Hopefully I brought scissors today. And again, I have my trusty cheese knife that I use to sharpen things and cut material. So again, you can use a regular knife. It's, it's actually simpler uh, to cut the material with. You start your hole there, you get your blade in, and you just cut your fabric. And I, can you move on this side so I don't cut you? Thank you. Again, this is not ideal. Typically you would have here scissors to use. Whenever you're cutting fabric, you want to create some kind of tension uh, so you can get through your fabric easier. You know, it might be a little ragged, uh, but again, you're gonna be folding this over. This is gonna be on a back side, back side of the piece. And if you have any excess, you are gonna be able to, of course, trim that down again once you have the piece actually stretched. So today, again, we're, we're stretching the canvas, but you also will be able to prep the surface of a canvas of this nature. Uh, so typically for oil painting, we'll be using gesso ground uh, to prep the surface. For acrylic, you could prep the surface, but you actually don't need to. Acrylic is a type of media uh, that you don't have to actually put a gesso ground down because it doesn't eat holes in the canvas. Uh, oil paint, it will eat a terribly large hole in the canvas if you don't uh, prep the surface because you're using turpentine uh, paint thinners uh, that help clean the brushes and dilute the, uh, the material, or the, the uh, oil itself, breaks it down. While you have acrylic, which is a water-based medium. Actually, we might be able to just tear this. There we go. Let us see. There we go. That's your fabric there. And your cheese. Okay. All right. So we didn't waste a lot of fabric. We have a yard of fabric. This we can use later to make other smaller paintings with, or, or uh, stretch for for paintings. So we'll just fold this back up. All the dirt off there, here in my studio. Uh, it does need to be cleaned a bit. But it's, I work a lot in this space. I make, make a lot of paintings here. I've only been in this specific space for about two years. But again, yeah, I've had several other spaces before this. Okay, so here at the canvas, we have our stretcher bar. Uh, it's, rel it's relatively good uh, size in relation to the bars themselves. Uh, here, let's check our, our staple gun. You can go back to this thing. Here, our staple gun. And we're going to check and see how many, if we have our a load of, of staples in there or not. Here we have a few. But I'm going to go ahead and, and load that up uh, for this one. Our brand new staples we have here. Go. These are beautiful staples. So these are again, these are heavy duty half inch. Uh, typically, you would need heavy duty half inch for a smaller canvas like this. Uh, and I can grab those staples in that shelf there. The second shelf in the bottom. Dilt down. You see, it says 50 on it. It says, it's a blue box, it says 50. Yes, bring that here, please. So here we have another set. Actually, these are half inch as well. Uh, so I typically have a quarter inch and half inch. 
And then there's a few in between that you can use. Uh, but this is what I prefer because I often work in heavy duty canvases like this one over here. Uh, actually, a friend of mine uh, paid, I paid him to stretch this specific uh, canvas, these large scale, you know, four feet by six feet canvases for my show coming up here in November. Here we go. So now we have a full slot there. Uh, we're going to shut that and we're going to start. So typically when you stretch your canvas, you want it to be balanced. You, have, you can't have too much tension on one side versus the other. But I like my canvases pretty tight. Uh, it almost has the same effect as a board uh, when, you're, when you're painting. So you have this nice, soft, kind of uh, tight surface. And you can use a little less paint on that type of surface as well. Okay, so here you go, start in the middle. One staple there. We'll turn it all the way around. Again, you see it. You can see the tension already in, in the surface here. So go here. Now I'm doing a vertical, but you also you can staple it horizontal. But for me, it's easier to do uh, vertical. Now then we'll go to the other edge. To the side here, you okay that? Yes, sir. And we'll staple right here. Then we'll turn this all the way around and do the same thing here. So, this is a process that we will repeat. So, here I'm going to do horizontal because I have a little less thread, a little less uh, fabric on the side. Then we'll go back here. Pull it on this side, get a staple in there, get it all the way around again. Let's repeat this process till we get all the way to the end. So now we're going to go to this side here. I always hold the staple gun at the top as well. This allows the staple down and directly into uh, the wood. Uh, sometimes if you hit an angle, if you can hit an angle, if you have a, a funny bend, let me see if I can, see like this one here. You see how we hit it and then it went in, but then it kind of slotted over to the side. So now it's not perfectly straight in. It is still hold, but this is not ideal. Ideally, it will look like one of these. Okay, so we have two on this side, so we're gonna rotate back around get one on the opposite side there. To this side. Okay, so here we've got all the way to the side on the shorter sides. So now we're going to start stapling the longer side till we get to the end. Okay, so once we get to the end uh, on this side, the short side and the long side from the middle, uh, then we repeat the same process but now we're gonna be working the opposite way. Uh, so instead of stapling this way, I'm gonna staple the opposite way, and then rotate the opposite, well, maybe the same way, but either way, I'm working away from the middle uh, on both sides again. So balancing it and rotating it so that the pressure is applied 
to the side directly across the opposite of it. So again, create a little tension when you pull, place it down, stay good. Okay, Now, here we have a few, uh, because of the way I had to staple it, they stand up a little bit. So if you have a little hammer, Anaya, can you get my hammer? There should be a little brown one right there. So we'll just hammer it down on these two edges here. You see the hammer? Yes or no? Oh, it's over there. All right, so she's bringing me the hammer. Thank you, Anaya. Uh, so here, We'll just take the hammer, tap it straight down. Tap it straight down. And now it's flat, how we want it. So whenever you have those stick it straight up, make sure you uh, aim towards those corners. You don't want to just take it and slam it in the middle because then it can squash down and it won't go straight down into uh, the wood like you want it to. So we're going to have three more here. So we're going to tap here in the corner. Good. So even these strikes here have to be balanced. So this is going a little crooked there. Okay, this still works. There we go. That's pretty flat. All right, then we'll continue finishing up these last few staples. Then we'll figure out how to do the corners. All right, so here we have our staples all the way around, but all the way to the edges. Uh, so now we have these nice little flappy uh, pieces of material. Now there are a couple ways you can end the edges of your canvas, uh, but uh, some have, people have different preferences. So here I'm gonna take it, put it this way, I'm gonna fold it here at the center, tuck this side under, and try to get that top side flat. Here. So I'll pull that down and we'll have a straight edge along the side. So tuck that corner, we have a straight edge along the side. So here, take my staple gun, and I'll staple that there, and staple it there. Here we have that in. Is complete. It's done. We'll finish the other four corners in a similar manner. So we're going to fold this one. Since this side has a really short side, we're going to cover that short side. We'll tuck that in. 
Hold it so we can line that edge up. With the other side. And this is where we will staple it. So I'll probably pull that one out. I'll put a nice one right here behind it. So I'll take my nice cheese knife. Pull that one out. Yeah, I put another one a little further up here. Oh, look. We are out. So I'm about to reload. We'll finish it up. There. You just have two more corners. Again, they're all they're all virtually the same. Uh, so since these are kind of along the edges here, we can do the same thing down here so they match. So we have the same kind of directional uh, pattern of the edges. So we'll pull this part tight here. Voila, it lines up. So staple it here. Oh, there's another ugly one there. Again, you have those lovely ones, you can always fix those. Just pull it out and put a better one in. Everything is a process. Last corner. So we've lined these up with the edges. Our last one will also line up with this edge here. So we'll take it this way. And it's perfect because that's the short side. So here we'll fold, tuck that in. So if you come on this side, so you always make sure. So you're just you're simply tucking in, pulling that to the corner. So you're gonna tuck it in as neatly as possible though, and folding that over. We have a little extra, so I'm going to pull that back and then pull it down. There. Let's take this one here. And I get a nice little cross on here as well. All right, so this is the way I learned how to stretch a canvas. So well, again, you have these little floppy areas, this extra thread. You could take scissors and simply cut along there and make that uh, nice and aesthetic based on how you like it. So here we have our first stretch canvas. This one being 18 uh, by 24 inches. So come back and see me next week and we'll see how to prepare a canvas surface. We'll actually prep it with uh, probably acrylic gesso ground uh, for an oil painting. So you wanna follow me on the steps, uh, subscribe, uh, like. Also, I do have a Facebook page. Uh, you just find me at Cortland Blade on Facebook. Uh, so, Cortland Blade, the artist. Uh, this is our canvas. Thank you. I'll see you next week.